Uh, my name is Peter, and I work for Red Hat as a member of the OpenShift uh, OTA team, which is a little cryptic shortcut for over-the-air updates. So we are speaking about ourselves more like about updates team. I don't really know why, why, why we still keep the over the air because that's mostly irrelevant. We have five, five wonderful people for my colleagues and we, are, we are basically own the whole uh, up, update experience in OpenShift. And to be able to speak about what improvements we did in up, updates, I, I will need to do a little introduction about how, how, how updates work, like from, from generals, a little bit of OpenShift update one on one on one. So updates updates in OpenShift that are they're built in. It's supposed to be a no brainer. Click the button and everything happens like without without an oversight kind of feature. And like it it really is like before I joined the updates team, uh, I was working for one of our platforms team and and uh, we operated several OpenShift clusters. And like updates were one of my favorite features because it's like you, you push the, select the version, push a button, and now you see this whole thing started moving, like the, the machine starts moving, like all the things, like I'm upgrading myself and I'm running one of three replicas in the new version. And we just watch that for, I don't know, 40 minutes, then it's done, everything works. One, one, one other cool thing about, about upgrades in OpenShift, like OpenShift is a platform, right? It, it, it serves no purpose like on its own. It's supposed to uh, run your workloads. It's supposed to uh, like, yeah, run your stuff. And that, that's the thing you, you care about. So the one thing that's important for, for platform upgrades is it shouldn't disrupt the, the things that you care about, the, the workloads. And because OpenShift also controls and, 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 and handles all the, all the like, content, configuration, operating system on the nodes, updates usually mean like you need to update stuff on the nodes, and uh, the whole thing is designed to, to not disrupt any workloads as long as somehow properly configured. If you're running one replica of something, then like, that's, that's not highly available enough to not be disrupted. You can't upgrade a single replica thing without disruption. So OpenShift is architectic use, uh, is architectic use in operator pattern. And operator pattern is 2019 kind of buzzword when everything started, everyone started writing operators. And the, the, the idea is simple. You encode the operational knowledge of something into software, and then you, like, you, you let that software like, manage your stuff. And this is everywhere in OpenShift. So every component in OpenShift has, a, has an operator that takes care of itself. And there's one operator to rule them all that, like, that handles all these operators. And that's, that, that, that one is called cluster version operator, CVO for short. And it's, it, 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 counts the, it encodes the operational knowledge. So it, it respects this, 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 uh, this reconciliation towards desired state idea. So there is a custom resource in the cluster that has a spec. The spec says, I want to be on version, I don't know what, that, what there is, 4.13.2. There's a control loop, like CVO continuously reconciles the cluster state toward, towards this version all the time. And as long as like, nothing happens, it just like, keeps, keeps the cluster running. Upgrade is nothing, nothing more special than you like, set, set the new desired version, the CVO notices, yeah, I want to be on this version, I'm on this version, and we'll start working. And start, starting working is like, it will, it will resolve the, like the, like the version number to something we called the payload image. The payload image uh, is an artifact that contains uh, manifests for all the like, desired version of OpenShift, and we'll start to reconcile to that state. I was, it's, it's, it's not this simple, right? So if I, if I set anything into the desired version, it will probably not work. Like I, I need to set one of the known versions, one of the available, uh, available versions. I can't, I can't write that there like foobar will not work. I, I, I need to write there 4.13.3. And these available versions are also stored in that, in that, uh, in the customer resource, in the customer resource, in the, in the available updates, updates field, and it just lists like the, the, the options that the user have to update to. 
And these, these options are surfaced to the users and in all the, uh, in all, all the UIs. This is how it looks like in the, in the web console. This is how it looks like in the, in the, if you use the command line interface. It will say recommended upgrades. There are four, four, four options in this case. And it works there. So like the question is, how does CBO know what versions are available for the current state? Answer to that is uh, there is an update graph. <coughs> An update graph is, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a heap of data <laughs> that we serve uh, using, using a service called OpenShift Update Service. Uh, it's served using Cincinnati protocol, that's a rele relevant technical detail. And like Red Hat maintains an instance of this service uh, to which all the clusters in the Red Hat's fleet like talk to, uh, the, all the clusters query OSIS for uh, update information. So if you dig a little bit more into update graph, it's, it's all the possible update paths there are. So we test updates and we have some intents about like which versions do we want to allow people uh, to upgrade. So we, we generally like want people to skip from one minor version to the next one. We don't, uh, we don't allow, allow them to skip. And this is all encoded into like one huge direct, uh, directed acyclic graph DAG. And uh, that like, contains all the, all the possible options. This huge thing, the hu huge heap of data, is more is partitioned into into so-called channels, which are like subgraphs of this of the, of the of the one huge thing. And the channels like allow us to encode uh, some some strategies. So so our 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 like our our strategies like we we have channels for individual minor versions of OpenShift. And we have uh, stable, fast, and candidate channels. So in candidate, we, we, uh, we include uh, releases as soon as they get built. In fast, we include releases as soon as, uh, as they get like, published, like, released officially. And in stable, we include them after they, they have been released for sufficient amount of time, and we know, like soak time, and we know that like, there's nothing like, too wrong with them. The whole thing works. CBO queries OSIS and asks about uh, asks about the da uh, about the data in the in the uh, in the in the graph, like for, for the specification of the cluster. And it could be like it, it's very simple. Like CBO asks, "Hey, I'm the 4.11.1 cluster, and I follow fast 4.11 channel. Where can I go?" And in this case. Like the, the response would be, you can go to 11.2 or 11.3 because like the, wow, there's a mistake on the slides. <laughs> the, ori or the orange bubble should say dot four, obviously, so not to be confusing. So it can't. So if it follows the fast 4.11, it can't go to the 4.4 uh, because like it's still on, still only on the candidate channel. So that's that's the upgrades one on one, one on one. Uh, but like in, in, in reality, things do not often go as planned. And I've said like, we, we test all this, right? This like the open shit is heavily tested, upgrades are heavily tested, everything like if, if we have an edge in the graph, it's supposed to work. Well, yeah, it's, it's a real world, right? But bugs, bugs, bugs still happen. Sometimes things uh, slip, slip out. And we, when we manage to release something that's slightly problematic in some way, we, we can use the control we have over the, over the upgrade graph uh, to steer away people from the, pro from the problematic releases. So we, we, can, we can say, hey, don't, don't, don't upgrade to this version. It's, it's maybe like, could break you. So we have this power, and the question is how do we use it? Uh, so one thing that's, it's still happening. Uh, it, I think this was the first method. It's still happening. It's not happening. Like, uh, that much anymore, we, we tombstone the releases, which is like, yeah, we discovered there's a problem when, when something is still in fast. That's the purpose of the fast channel. So we will not promote it into the stable channel. Like people who are on the stable channel will, will never see this, uh, never see this thing. And we'll just like need to wait until the next release comes up and, and gets included in the, in the stable channel. So that's one thing that we can do. We can protect the like, downstream uh, channels following cr cluster from, from ever observing the problematic version. Uh, and this is, this is like 
this has two, two issues. Like one issue, which is like, uh, one, one issue uh, is, uh, and I will be speaking more about this, is like it, it lets people wait. We, like we, we apparently released 4.11.2, uh, the buggy version, with some intent, right? right? We ship some features, we ship, ship some bug fixes. And there may be people who just like desperately wait for this one bug fix that's supposed to go in like .2 version, the buggy one, and like they just need to wait. The second problem is we, also, we only uh, protect this way the, the, the clusters that follow the, the, the downstream channels. Like the, if, if you follow the fast one, yeah, that's your problem. You can upgrade there because like we discovered the problem while the, this thing is, was on the channel. So while we protect the stable guys, yeah, the fast and candidates, like, we'll, see, we, we'll, we'll see the problem. So we can just like we can just pretend the version was never there. We just remove the thing from from either the whole graph or just from the from the channel. Like there's there's no buggy version. We pretend it is, doesn't exist. We have no problem. No, nobody will see it. Uh, except the people who already upgraded to this version, uh, because like there there may be some time before we manage to uh, remove that. So that, that some people may have been may have upgraded, and maybe the bug was not serious, or maybe it was non-deterministic, and I haven't hit them. They want just to continue upgrade, and we they they their CVO will uh, the, the CVO will query OSIS, and the OSIS will say, yeah, you are saying on this you are saying you are on this version, and you follow this channel, but you are not. That version doesn't exist, and this is what we'll, they will see the red red thing, and like that's a not best user experience, so we don't do this. Uh, the one other thing we could do is we just cut all the edges, uh, which is basically the same like the previous with a slightly better UX because it will, uh, it will not, it, we will not present ugly red box to the users. We will just say, you are on this version and you have no, no, no path to upgrade. You can't go anywhere, good luck. And I guess the obvious thing that, you, that we will solve this is like we will remove just the inbound edges. Uh, so nobody can go in, in. everybody can go out if, if they want to. Uh, and that, that's it, right? yeah, that's the solution, except it isn't because we still have this, this problem of like we, we make people wait for the new for the new uh, for the new release, and the problem is more pronounced than than we would like because like the real world is complicated. Uh, the bugs are not made the same in the same way, right? There's, we could have a typo in the web console, yeah, and nobody would really care. We wouldn't uh, block the upgrade uh, update edge for this reason. On this other side of the of the spectrum, if we if we make a data center explode, we would probably uh, block the edge. And there's a there's a lot of like gray gray areas between between these two. Also, the people are like the people have different sensitivities to 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 uh, to problems to to issues. Like if you have a like startup full of Kubernetes hackers who can just like take things, take care of things themselves. They they may be able to recover from I don't know minor bug or something, and they may want, they may want to upgrade. On the other side, like you can have you can have people who just like really care about reliability and like they, they want they don't want to see any kind of disruption. And again, there's a lot of like gray area in the middle. And still, the bugs bugs themselves are like different. Like we can have uh, we we can have like issues that affects like everyone, but we can have issues that af affect like certain configurations, cert certain sizes, certain cloud for cloud platforms. Uh, the last one is very common. Like we can have problems with I don't know Amazon based uh, clusters, which means like everybody else will just not 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 need to care. So. We have this like complicated world, and we have just like this one like we, we have we have a hammer of like we will like block the edge or we won't, and the decisions like the, the, the decisions there are really tricky. Like if we if if we affect everyone, we will probably pull the edge. If we affect Amazon clusters, yeah, maybe if it's if it's serious enough. Uh, but if we don't, 
we will endanger the Amazon Amazon clusters. That's that's the like that's the that's the problem we wanted to solve. This is the area that where we wanted to improve our stuff. So we solve that with uh, we call that either update recommendations or we call that conditional updates. And it has uh, it has two principles. Like uh, first, we want to break this like one size hammer. Uh, uh, aspect of what we had it's like so 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 we what what we did is uh, we we want to annotate the update edges with uh, like enough information so that uh, the cluster itself can evaluate like EMI affected by this problem EMI the AWS cluster EMI the cluster with 100 plus nodes like EMI endangered uh, so this that's one thing like we have this, these annotations. And second <coughs> is uh, by, by removing, by always like removing the edge, like we have the power and the cluster admin, administrator had, had no power, right? They, they had just didn't see the update. But the cluster administrators, they are also the ones who know their situation the best. Like it, they may be risk averse or not. They, 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 they know whether this is like test cluster where they, where they don't need to care. They, they know whether they use the, the impacted feature or not. So, so they should have some amount of, some amount of power uh, to, dis, to decide uh, whether they want to, uh, to want like to, to risk it. Like maybe they don't care, maybe they do. And uh, we want, well, to, in, in order for them to, to be able to make the decision, uh, they need to they, they need information about like what's what's happening, like what's the bug. Uh, so we did so we did that, and so what, what what we are doing is like we 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 monitor the known issues in OpenShift for things we call uh, for, for for things that could be problematic, like the the one the, either the problems in the upgrade itself or regressions, like if something worked before, it now it doesn't, and if you upgrade to version to where it doesn't, like you, 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 are, you, are, not, you are unhappy, so, so we, we scour our like, bugs for, for this kind of candidates. We, uh, when we decide, okay, this is, we know enough about this uh, enough known issue, what, what we can do is like we, we encode this, uh, the, the known information about this issue, and we encode this to be, to, to be to, uh, so that this, this information is included as annotations in the upgrade graph. So this is an example of such, su such metadata of the, of, of, the, uh, like, of, of, of the edge. Like if, uh, uh, this is an example, like if you go to this version from any version, there's a known issue, we, we give, give it some kind of like little informational name, we, we, we put there a little like brief message about what's happening. And we put there uh, the PromQL query, and the PromQL query uh, encodes the like self-assessment, like what 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 is happening there? Like the cluster is supposed to execute this this PromQL query against its monitoring stack to discover whether it is uh, whether it is uh, affected by the by the issue or not. Uh, this is how it would look like in the. This is how it would look like in the uh, in the OSIS uh, provided data. So it's, it's basically the same thing, just in a different in, in a different format. The cluster will self-evaluate the PromQL we included, and if it if it if it if it, if it discovers I'm not affected, then. Like the user will not see anything; it will just as as if there is no problem at all. If the if the CVO discovers uh, the cluster is affected, uh, it will surface this in again in the in the in the user interface. And there's a there's a there we put there a little like additional step for people to be to to uh, to be able to update to these versions. So so we we will we will surface this like we will say these updates are still support it, but we don't recommend there. We, we make you like switch, switch a toggle or include a, like one more option when you, when you do an upgrade to, to be able to see these like non-recommended paths. 
so 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 it's 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 hard to like mistakenly update to something that we don't recommend. And that's basically it. This is this is what we do. Like this is this is how we solve the problem, partially, I guess. So I would like I would like to speak a little about uh, about the like what we discovered. So we so this conditional upgrades feature it's there for about a year, uh, I think for three releases now. Uh, we had 24 things like separate issues where we where we used it where we end up saying we don't recommend upgrade to some versions of OpenShift. So we have some some idea whether we manage to like ma manage to uh, improve the situation or uh, or not. Uh, one one thing about this is the, the the success of this is a little hard to measure because like one large set of people who will who, who are benefiting benefiting from it, like they will not notice right. The, the main benefactors are the people who would previously need to wait for the new upgrade. Uh, even if they are not at risk, like we previously, we, we made people on GCP wait for new release because there was an AWS bug, right? And now they don't wait, but they don't even see they like they would need to wait before. So they, uh, we have no way to measure this, like how, how how happy these people are. So we only see the people who uh, we only we ha we only have like good good idea about uh, the people who, who see the non-recommendations. And uh, like the overall thing, as uh, overall feedback is, is, uh, is, is quite positive, but with some, some, some nice like clusters of, of negative, of negative uh, responses. So one thing like we, <laughs> we discovered is like, like many people operate in, in like everything is support, uh, everything is supposed to, everything is supposed to work. And if it doesn't, we, uh, uh, they, they will, they, they will uh, contact support. So that's the world they are living. They are not used to, to make these, dishes, <laughs> made this, these decisions. So, so we have feedback about, uh, you are informing us about the bug in your software. That means you are not testing your software properly. You should stop releasing buggy software. So this is something where, like, where we need to somehow manage the expectations. Uh, I sometimes like there was there was there was even uh, there was even a sentiment that uh, that that it's better to not tell people about uh, about. They, they, they don't want to be told about bugs because they, uh, they can't handle that in their processes. Like they, they click the button and if it doesn't succeed, they will, they will, they, they will contact support. That's, that's routine, that's, that's how they work. But we are now making it hard for them to click the button and they, they can now contact support about whether they, 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 they want to click the button. So that's something that like, we want to maybe improve our user experience there by making things more clear, providing better descriptions. I don't know, so, but this is something we, we took. Uh, so, second thing uh, is something that we discovered, like a lot, a lot, of, a lot of people uh, have some, they don't, they don't uh, update to the most recent version or anything, they will just test something in their lab, a certain update path, and they will plan, okay, we will update to this thing that we tested in, a, in, in two weeks where we have a window, and if we, uh, in the meantime, discover like, some, some known issue, and we will like, pull the recommendation, they will come to us and complain that, well, we, we, we pulled, uh, we removed the edge we wanted to follow, uh, and we, 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 we found out that there's a, there's a huge step, like, like things are mostly fine, as long as there is at least one recommended uh, recommended path to follow, like if, if there is at least one thing that shows up all the time, that's fine. But we need to be really careful if we want to pull recommendations in a way that makes like uh, to, to make that into the state where like no 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 recommended path uh, uh, remains because that ma that makes people confused and we definitely need to make uh, the user experience like in this case when there is no recommended path left like much better than it is now so one thing that we discovered also is that like promql works like very well 
for us. Like it's, uh, it works very well for us to, like for, for the cluster to be able to do the, to do the self evaluation. But there are some concepts, that some intents that are like either very hard, like from QL itself, it's not the easiest thing to write. And something, so some, some intents, like when we say, when we, when we want to say these clusters are affected, they're, they're hard to express, or in, in some cases, it's, it's even impossible. Like if, if we have no metric about some specific like aspect of the, of the problem, uh, we have like, we, we will need to go to that older version of just like block the edges for everyone. One thing that's more like social than technical is like the, uh, the like continuous monitoring of, of issues and assessing, uh, assessing whether they are serious enough and what, what kind of uh, clusters do they affect and what edges do they affect. It's, uh, it's still a lot of, a lot of toil that it, we don't want to do. So uh, we, we just need to make this process of like from discovery of a potential blocker to the decision about like we will annotate the edges or we will not annotate the edges like very, very short. And in some, some cases it's, 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 uh, it's a lot of work. And the last thing uh, that we want to spend, like, like this is more like our, our intent for the future. Like the, we know that like the, the user experience for this is, uh, is, 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 it's not the worst, <laughs> but it's, it's surprising for, for many people. Like they are not used to make decisions about upgrades uh, in, this, in this aspect, in this area. So we, we need to really, really like work intentionally with some UX experts to better, better like surface what, we, what like data we have, what, what options do the user have and stuff like that. And this is made a little, little problem, like, like made a little confusing, I guess, with uh, like there are other like features in OpenShift where that somehow like they, they, they touch updates and they touch like risky updates. So there is like the, there, there's one other feature that, uh, uh, that like prevents pre people from updating if the cluster is in, in some problematic state. Like that's a core functionality. If one of the cluster operators is, is like, I don't know, not available, we will like the, the open shift will set itself into like not upgradable state. Uh, there is a, there's this like feature in the support where like that that's AI driven and it, it makes it provides the cluster administrator advice about like you your cluster is in a state that's very similar to other clusters that uh, that up, up, upgrade it and encounter some kind of problem and these all have like slightly slightly different user experience and like they, they have like like it, there, are, there are many people like operating in this area, and we somehow need to uh, make make the make the experience consistent with these other features, like so that there is like I don't know one one place where you go to upgrade, you get all the information you need, and you make your decision. So that's that's our plans for the future. So that's what I have. Uh, I will be happy to answer any questions here, hallway track, anywhere. I'll try to summarize that for the recording. Like the question is, if I got it right, is there with the with the uh, self evaluation criteria be, being based on PromQL, which means reading the metrics published in the cluster, 
like how to solve the the case when when there's no metric uh, being published that somehow describes the like the possibly problematic area. So yeah, and this is a, this is a weak spot. So uh, like if if there isn't. So right now, we don't have the solution. If it's not describable in PromQL, we, we can still do the, the old style uh, blocked edge, which means like just pull the edge for everyone. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the like backup we have. Uh, many things uh, can be made metrics. Like if, if there is a custom resource, there's an operator which operates on these custom resources, which means like anything you express in this custom resource can in some way be made metrics, even, even if like, maybe not for alerts, maybe just for us, right? Uh, and, but yes, so it, it's our, uh, we don't have the solution today, but the, but the feature is architected. Uh, it, it, it would be seen on one of the, one, one of the listings. I, I won't go back there, but the PromQL is, is like right now the only instance of like, I think, Match, matching rules, something like that. So it's it's engineered, so we can build a new matching engine. So we would, I don't know, do something like something else for querying this. What was the name of the talk? Even driven. So there was there's a little discussion in the in the audience. Like there there is a even driven automation talk earlier today. There should be a recording of that, which uh, uh, which like describes some some new mechanism of querying the state of the cluster. That I guess we could build something out on top of this to build a new. Yeah. Yeah, we, we could build something to, to, to use this to, to query the cluster. Anything else? Yes. <laughs> uh, the question is uh, that there are people who see the version uh, they want to update to. So they decide they will do it tomorrow, and but, um, until tomorrow, the version is gone. Uh, with, with the amount of people running OpenShift clusters, uh, it can happen uh, for someone. Like, we, we always need to do the recommendation at some point in time, right? So there, it's, it's so one day it's available, we, we, we stop recommending it, second day it's behind the toggle. Uh, and is, this is one thing that we that, that's that isn't the greatest UX, but we also we also kind of think that this can get better as as, as people like will get used to like, the fact that there are some non-recommended things, so they can you that they can look behind the toggle and maybe see that version and see why it was pulled and decide okay I st I, I wanted to do that yesterday we did. Like Red Hat stopped recommending it because there was a typo in the web console. I don't care about the web console. Can still click the button. So it's this is this is one of the feedbacks that we are getting, and we want to make it better. But we also think it will get better with time. So the question is, how do we stage the upgrades? Whether we make made them in like like I don't know canary batches, and if they if they work well, we upgrade the rest. So there are different answers to this. So uh, I, I think these decisions uh, are, are are more relevant in this in the world of like managed OpenShift, where like Red Hat SREs are making this like managing that. I don't I don't know. Uh, their processes that well, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to like share them. Uh, but we we are like uh, in in the like core OpenShift, like the experience is that the customers make the decisions. Like they, they see the versions and they just like upgrade whenever they 
Like they have the window, they, I don't know, they're their own considerations. Uh, yes, that's, there, there was a lot of discussions about automated upgrades even for like them, but that's, that OpenShift doesn't have that feature right now. Managed OpenShift does. All right, I think we've run out of time. Or there's, there's lunch, so it's not that sensitive, but there's recording and stuff. So I think, thanks, everyone, for questions. If there are more, I will be happy to talk to you uh, like outside of the talk. Thank you. <laughs>